Good evening, and I hope that you had a wonderful Rosh Hashanah and that you're looking forward to an excellent week ahead with the days of Teshuva and culminating in Yom Kippur, which is very, very exciting. Please, God, we'll speak more about that next week. On Shabbos, we'll be reading the parasha of Vayelech, one of the final parashas of the Torah. And one of the verses, one of the mitzvot in this parasha is, V'ata kitvu lachem et hashira hazot, v'lamda et b'nei Yisrael. And now write for yourselves this poem and teach it to the Jewish people. The Torah is called a poem. And this is a mitzvah, in fact, for every single Jew to write a Torah. That they should write an entire Sefer Torah, like the ones we have in the Ark. Um, have, have any of you done it? Um, truth is, not many people have. However, the Rosh Rabbeinu Asher, the great Ashkenazi halachic authority from around six, seven hundred years ago, says that actually we don't need to write out a Torah to fulfill this mitzvah. This mitzvah is about making available Torah books from which you can learn. So you can fulfill this mitzvah in its most basic literal sense by writing out a Torah so that you have a Torah to learn from. But another way of fulfilling this mitzvah is if you would buy Torah books and uh, learn from those. That's, that's an interesting idea. But the Torah is called a poem. And one of the poetry generally is that it generally has levels. On the surface level, I understand it. But you can also take a deeper look at some of the poet is, is, is writing here, either, you know, what's happening in between the lines, underlying themes, things that, uh, things that are expressed in that way. And the Maggot of Dubno has a great illustration about the value of Torah. He says that in general, in the business world, you have skilled labor and unskilled labor. So somebody with a great qualification, with a degree and experience, is able to perform very skilled, difficult, uh, not, so, uh, not so easy to do stuff, and they're generally able to charge a premium from it. They can make a great deal of money. That's the, uh, that's the plus. And somebody who is unskilled has to do something more menial, and they generally don't receive as much money. But he says there is an advantage of the unskilled laborer over the skilled worker. And that is when we're in a difficult time, there's difficult economic times, not everybody wants the specialized services of the skilled worker. Unfortunately, we know from this in the, in the, the last uh, market crash and all the economic turmoil we've been experiencing, that you had investment bankers and some of the most highly qualified financial people in the world suddenly finding themselves without any kind of job. Whereas somebody who works in road construction had a much more certain guaranteed employment. So the ideal, the Maggot of Dubna really says, would be somebody who is able to operate at a skilled, advanced, sophisticated level when the need arises, and yet is also able to do menial, unskilled labor when the time comes. And that, he says, is part of the greatness of the Torah. The Torah is available to everybody. The Torah can be understood on a surface level, on a basic level, to every single person. And yet, if you really want to go deeply into the Torah, if you want to look deeply at, at the, the, the deeper analysis, the secret messages within the Torah, that's there as well. The Torah can be understood on so many levels. You can spend years pondering over a single verse of the Torah. The Torah is great on that surface level. It has a message for everybody. And it's relevant and it's instructive and it's helpful and it's beautiful. But it also has a deeper level as well. And the this book, Shem Olam, quotes the Vilna Gaon as saying something quite amazing. In the morning, we speak about the different mitzvot in the world. We say the Talmud Torah keneged kulam. And the study of Torah is equal to all of the reward for all of the other mitzvot. So the Vilna Gaon asked the question, how much Torah do you need to study for it to be equal to all of the other mitzvot? And he gives an astounding answer. He says, every word of Torah. Every single word of Torah that we study is such a great mitzvah that it is equal to the reward that you would get from all other 612 mitzvot combined. It's just the most amazing and the most wonderful thing. And, uh, and another idea about the Torah, I'd like to share a few more ideas about it. We sing on a Friday night the famous song, Eishet Chayil Miyimsa. A woman of valor, a, a precious, special woman. Who can find? That's how we start. Asia Khan Mim, so who can find such a woman? And uh, I think every week, as I'm sure other grateful husbands do, they think, but I've found such a woman. Why, uh, why every week? We've got our wonderful wives. Why every week do we say again, who can find such a wife? It seems many of us have found them. And uh, we know that Asia Khan is not only a praise to the woman of the house, but it's also a praise of the Torah itself. And who can find the Torah? 
But again, who can find the Torah? Hashem Himself says, Ki The mat of the Torah is very, very close to you. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart. Just, just do it. It's right there. It's not, the Torah is not far away. Why are we saying, me and so who can find it? Chavz Chaim gives such a beautiful answer. He says, whenever you think you have truly understood the value of the Aisha Chayil, of the wonderful woman of the Torah, you haven't. When it says me and it doesn't mean who can find. It means who can truly understand its value. Who can truly be said, you've, you've grasped it, you've got it, you've understood it. Have you really found it? Have you really found her? Have you really found the Torah? Just when you think you know how valuable the Torah is, you don't know. There's a saying that the Mitzurat David, Rabbi David Altshula, great commentator on the Tanakh, that he said in his commentary on Mishle, he says, Ein simcha There is no doubt, I beg your pardon, there is no happiness like the resolution of doubts. One of the great things about the Torah is that it gives us guidance. Where Torah comes from the word Hora'ah, instruction. The Torah gives us instruction on life. It points us in the right direction. It gives us values. It gives us insights. It gives us practical behavior for how we're supposed to live our lives. How to rejoice. How to, God forbid, mourn. How to thank. How to show our gratitude and appreciation. When to be strong and unyielding. When to give in. The Torah is an instruction. It's a guide for life. It resolves all of our doubts. There are so many complicated, difficult situations in life. Can I do this in business? Is this moral? Is this ethical? The Torah has all of those answers. The Torah gives us clarity and light. The Torah is aura. The Torah is light. Near mitzvah, the Torah aura. A mitzvah is like a candle. But the Torah is light, King Simon said. And that's the greatness of the Torah. And the great gift that we have of having the Torah available every moment. That every day, every moment, every, every hour, you can learn new words of Torah, new insights from Torah. You can learn them on a surface level. You can delve deeper into it to extract more from it. And the more time you spend on it, as we say in Pirkavot, turn it over and turn it over because everything's in it. And the more you look into the Torah, the more you find in the Torah. Final thought, we say, we ask Hashem every day, Give us our share in your Torah. And the Chavetz Chaim says what that means is, every person has a unique aspect of Torah that is set aside for them. That nobody else who has ever lived or who will ever live can discover. There is a unique aspect of Torah that only you can bring out. That's your Torah. It's waiting for you. It's in the Torah. It's like buried treasure, he says. It's like somebody calls you and says, I buried the treasure. Here's the treasure map. Go and look for it. It's there. You know it's there. The question is, if you're willing to put in the time and effort to discover that unique treasure, that unique gem of Torah that only you can bring out. Have a wonderful Shabbat.